Here's another income tax problem. For this one though, we're given the gross income and the adjustments and deductions, and we have to find the taxable income before we can calculate the taxes that are owed. So there's a lot of information that's given, and we want to simplify and find out what, we're, what we know. So we start with the gross income of 65,000. From this income, we subtract adjustments, exemptions, and deductions. Those are the three categories of things that get subtracted. Now, the adjustments are straightforward. We know that there's $2,000 in adjustments, so we subtract off $2,000 from the gross income. Then, for exemptions, these are never listed in the problem statement, but we need to remember what they mean. Remember, each taxpayer gets an exemption for themselves, and then one for each dependent that they have. So this woman is a single woman, so she gets an exemption for herself, but she has no dependents, so she gets one exemption. Notice in the tax table that the exemption amount is 3950 so we subtract off 3950 This is a step that's easy to forget, to forget to subtract off the exemptions, because they're never stated in the problem. But remember, each person gets one exemption for themselves, and then one for each dependent, and you find that amount in the tax table. So we subtracted off exemptions and adjustments, and now, finally, we subtract off deductions. The biggest mistake here is just subtracting off these three deductions right away. But notice that the three deductions together only add up to $4,800. The standard deduction is higher than that. The standard deduction is $6,200. So this taxpayer has a choice between taking the itemized deductions, which add up to $4,800, or the standard deduction that adds up to 6200 Because she can choose, she chooses the one that's higher, because that deducts more, resulting in a smaller taxable income, and thus less taxes that she owes. So she'll subtract off the standard deduction. So you always check whether the itemized deductions give a better deal than the standard deduction, and subtract whichever one is higher. So we've taken the gross income, subtracted off the adjustments, exemptions, and deductions, and so we found that the taxable income is 52,850. So that's the taxable income. Now that's the number we'll start with, and we'll split this into the brackets. Notice that 52,850 winds up going into the third bracket. So we'll fill up the first and second brackets, and partially fill the third bracket. So that's the second step. Once we've gone from the gross income and whittled it down to the taxable income, now we split this taxable income into those brackets and then calculate the tax that's owed from each bracket. So in the first bracket, the 10% bracket, there's the first $9,075. In the second bracket, we'll place everything from $9,075 up through $36,900. So if we subtract those two, Again, we get 27825 Similarly, for the third bracket, the 25% bracket, because we don't fill it up, we only go up to $52,850, we'll subtract that minus $36,900. So $52,850 minus $36,900 is $15,950. Now we calculate the taxes owed from each bracket. So we take 10% of the 9,075, and we get 907.50. We take 15% of 27,825, and get 41.73 and 75 cents. And 25% of 15,950 gives us 39.87 and 50 cents. So to calculate the total tax owed, we add these three together and get 9,068 and 75 cents. But we're not quite done yet. This is the tax owed before the tax credit gets applied. So again, the most complicated thing with these tax problems is recognizing what each of the terms means. Remember that we take the gross income, subtract off adjustments, exemptions, and deductions to get to the taxable income. And then after we've calculated the taxes that are owed for that taxable income, then we subtract off the tax credit. So tax credits get applied after 
taxes are calculated. So I didn't subtract 500 from the income, but now I subtract $500 from the final tax that's owed. So I take this, minus 500, and find that the final tax that she owes is $8,568.75. So that's the final answer. There's a lot of steps here, but remember we start with the gross income, subtract adjustments, exemptions, and deductions to get to the taxable income, then split that taxable income into the brackets and calculate the appropriate percentage of each bracket, add up all those taxes, and then subtract off any tax credits that exist. And that gives the final tax. So make sure you do all the steps in the proper order to get to the right number for the tax that's owed at the end of it all.